This class is brought to you by the LA Care and Blue Shield Promise Community Resource Centers. The centers are a place to help you be active, healthy, and informed. We hope you enjoy this virtual class. Hello everyone, my name is Leslie, and thank you for joining us once again for yet another series. Today's presentation, Boost Your Immunity, we will talk about the immune system and the ways in which it works to help make sure that we are protected and staying healthy. We will also learn a little bit more about those things that can affect the way our immune system works, and also we'll talk about tips to help make sure that you keep your immune system strong and working for you. Stay tuned. Today's presentation will begin with an introduction to the immune system. We will then go on to a true or false immunity quiz just to check our knowledge. And we will discuss the factors that affect the immune system as well as tips for a healthy immune system. Let's begin with the review of the immune system. Our immune system is our body's defense against infections. It is made up of special cells, tissues, and organs that work together to keep us healthy. Every day, our bodies come into contact with millions of germs, which include bacteria, fungi, viruses. These germs are so small that they cannot be seen by our eyes, but they can become harmful invaders of our bodies. The immune system works to recognize the good and the bad germs, and without it, you would constantly get sick. The immune system creates an immune response when the body identifies an invader or germ that does not belong. These invaders, or germs, attack the healthy cells of the body by first multiplying to become an infection. All invaders, such as bacteria, viruses, and other germs, have antigens. When the body detects the antigens from the germs, it begins to produce antibodies. You can think of antibodies as the body's soldiers that are ready and prepared to fight for our health. Antibodies, or the body's soldiers, stay in our bodies for ongoing protection. They work to remember the invaders and recognize these invaders faster the second time they come back. They work to destroy these invaders to help prevent us from getting sick. Before we go further into today's presentation, let's take a short moment to think about some questions. I will first read a statement and then you can try to answer whether you think it is true or false. Feel free to write down your thoughts. This isn't a test, so don't worry about being right or wrong since we will learn the information as we go through today's presentation. True or false, if you have a pre-existing health condition, there is no point in trying to keep your immune system healthy. True or false, little or poor quality sleep can affect your immune system. True or false, taking supplements like vitamin C will improve your immune system. True or false, antibacterial soap is better than regular soap for washing your hands. True or false, vaccines or shots are for small children only. We will begin with the first statement. If you have a pre-existing health condition, there is no point in trying to keep your immune system healthy. And drum roll, the answer is false. Whether you are healthy or have a pre-existing health condition or conditions, you can take active steps to support a healthy immune system to protect yourself from getting sick. Let's talk a little bit more about those factors or things that can affect your immune system. While there are some factors that can affect our immune system and factors that we cannot control, there are some factors that we can control. We will review nutrition, stress, lack of sleep, hand washing habits, vaccines and shots, as well as age. In general, a healthy lifestyle can promote good health and immunity. You have probably heard the phrase, food is medicine. And in a few moments, we will talk about exactly what food and nutrition does to our body. Food is medicine, and good nutrition is important for a strong immune system. There is not one single food or supplement that can prevent illness, but you can support a healthy immune system by eating a variety of foods from each food group. 
the body prefers to get nutrients from food. And that's because the body can use these nutrients in food better than it can from supplements. Let's take a few moments to review what these important nutrients are. Protein. It plays a role in healing and the body's recovery. You can have protein from animal sources such as seafood, lean meat, poultry, and eggs. Or you can get a mix of plant proteins such as beans, peas, soy products, and salted nuts and seeds. Vitamin A is important because it helps regulate the immune system and protect against infections by keeping the skin and tissues in the mouth, stomach, intestines, and respiratory or breathing system healthy. You can find vitamin A in foods such as sweet potatoes, carrots, broccoli, spinach, red bell peppers, apricot, eggs, or foods labeled vitamin A fortified such as milk or cereal. Vitamin C is important for our immune system because it helps support the creation of antibodies. It can be found in citrus fruits such as oranges, grapefruit and tangerines, red bell peppers, papaya, strawberries, tomato juice, or foods that are fortified with vitamin C such as some cereals. Vitamin E works as an antioxidant and may support the way in which the immune system works. It can be found in fortified cereals, sunflower seeds, almonds, vegetable oils, including sunflower or safflower oil, and peanut butter. Zinc is a nutrient that helps the immune system work correctly and may even help wounds heal. It can be found in lean meat, poultry, seafood, milk, whole grain products, beans, seeds, and nuts. Other nutrients, including probiotics, vitamin B6, vitamin B12, Copper, folate, selenium, and iron may also help support an immune system response and play a role in healthful eating. Let's take a moment to revisit one of the questions that I asked earlier. True or false, taking supplements like vitamin C will improve your immune system. And the answer is false. This is false because taking supplements will not automatically improve your immune system. We did mention that immunity and the body's ability to protect us from getting sick is really a combination of many things. That include not only the nutrients that we just talked about, but also stress, the lack of sleep, among other things. We just learned that vitamin C is an important part of helping your immune system work, but that doesn't mean that taking supplements will automatically help boost or improve your immune system. But if you are interested in taking supplements, it'll be a good conversation to have with the registered dietitian to know whether you truly do need some. So let's talk about some other nutritional tips that you can use to help make sure that your immune system is working the best it can. Color. Make sure you fill your plate with different colors. Food groups. Try to have at least three different food groups at each meal and try to add a variety of different foods. You can choose plant-based proteins and dairy alternatives if you prefer. Try to limit processed foods by having fast food no more than one time a week. And most food should be coming from nature, such as trees, a bush, the ground. Increase your fiber. Try to get 20 to 35 grams of fiber each day. You can find fiber in whole fruits and vegetables as well as whole grains. Limit your saturated and trans fat by avoiding dark meat, the skin on meat, butter, and creamy sauces. Eat less added sugar, so make sure that you're reading the food label so that you can choose items with little or no added sugar. The American Diabetes Association recommends no more than six teaspoons of added sugars for women and no more than nine teaspoons for men a day. And make sure you're watching your portions. Eating the right portions is important to help maintain good blood sugar control and maintaining a healthy weight. Use a plate method whenever you can to help make sure that your portions are well balanced. Let's talk about a different factor, sleep. 
Not getting enough sleep or quality sleep can affect the way in which your immune system works. Sleep is important for your physical and mental health, and studies show that there is a relationship between the two. Now, with the lack of sleep, your body can make fewer cytokines. Cytokines are made and released during sleep and are important for fighting infection and inflammation. With the lack of sleep, your body can produce inflammatory cytokines. These are a little bit different from the first cytokines we mentioned, but when your body begins to produce more of these inflammatory cytokines, they increase the risk of having heart conditions and other metabolic disorders like cholesterol and type 2 diabetes. With the lack of sleep, your body produces less antibodies, which then increases the chances of you getting sick from common infections like the cold and the flu. And also, with the lack of sleep, the way in which your natural killer cells work is reduced. So this increases the risk of viral infections and even cancer. Now, this doesn't mean that if you lose sleep, you will automatically have your immune system affected, but this just means that there is a relationship between the two and the chances are higher that your immune system can be affected. But we will continue to talk about those other factors that also affect your immune system. So with this, we cannot say that the lack of sleep is what caused cancer, but studies are beginning to show that there is a relationship in the way cells are changing. The lack of sleep or quality of sleep can affect your health in other ways. It is common to experience symptoms of depression and anxiety, and it can also make it more difficult to make healthier lifestyle choices. Also, the lack of sleep or good quality sleep can lead to weight gain due to changes that are happening in hormones. Ghrelin, for example, helps promote feelings of hunger. And when there is a lack of sleep, you have more of that hormone that tells you to eat. There is also less of that hormone leptin that tells your body to stop eating. There are also changes that happen in the body's ability to manage blood sugar levels, which can increase the chances of a type 2 diabetes, or for someone who already has type 2 diabetes, it can really affect the way in which the person is able to manage those blood sugar levels. So how good is the quality of your sleep? Ask yourself, are you able to fall asleep in 30 minutes or less? Do you wake up at night more than once during the night? Are you awake for more than 20 minutes? If you answered yes, then it's time to change up your sleep routine. So let's talk about some tips to help you to get more sleep. But if these are persistent and keep on continuing, it's very important that you speak with your doctor about the quality of your sleep. Let's review some tips to help you get more sleep. Avoid electronic devices at least one hour before bed. Studies show that the blue light from devices like phones or the TV or tablets can help prevent your body from making melatonin, which is a hormone that helps you sleep. Take naps. Nap for 30 minutes or less. Wake up and go to sleep at the same time. Setting a routine for sleep can help you over time and it is also important to set routines on the weekends. Exercise. This does affect people a little bit differently. Some people find it relaxing to do it a few hours before they go to sleep, while other people find that it wakes them up. So you might have to explore a little bit. Avoid caffeine and alcohol. Caffeine and alcohol can interrupt the quality of your sleep. And make changes to your sleep environment. Make it quiet and comfortable and sleep in a dark room or add a scent that you like. The morning light naturally causes melatonin levels to drop and it's supposed to help you get ready and alert for the day. So if you have curtains that allow a lot of light, you might find yourself waking up in the early morning hours. Consider using darker window panels or some that block the light. Some studies have also shown that lavender can have some calming effects. Let's go back and revisit one of our other questions. True or false, little or poor quality sleep can affect your immune system. And the answer is true. 
Chronic or ongoing stress can have many effects on a person's health and can affect the immune system in two ways. First, stress can make it hard for the body to make antibodies. Under stress, the body sets off an alarm to help us deal with the stress. This alarm releases a stress hormone called cortisol, and cortisol can make it hard for the body to make those antibodies that destroy those germs. Second, chronic stress can make it hard for people to practice healthy habits. So it may become more difficult to eat that nutritious meal or those nutritious snacks. It may be harder to exercise, and you may be more likely to smoke. Under constant stress, the body's alarm is always on and can weaken the immune system over time. Stress is a part of our life and it can happen to us all, but we all experience stress differently. Even if the stress is ongoing, what we do to manage the effects of the stress will be very important to our health and our mental well-being. To help manage stress, use relaxation techniques such as deep breathing and visualization. Relaxation can also include taking a warm bath or having your favorite cup of tea. You don't have to pay for relaxation and managing stress can be done in the comfort of your own home. Exercise. Get your heart rate up even if it's only 15 minutes a day. And remove stress when you can. It's okay to say no and it's also okay to ask for help when needed. And plan when you can. If you have a lot to do, start with taking smaller steps. Attitude is everything. Keep a positive attitude by finding something good about an area in your life. Take a moment for yourself and take a few minutes to do something that you enjoy. Focus on what you can change and consider talking with someone. Confide in a trusted family member or friend. And there are also professionals that can listen and help you find solutions. Let's talk about those other factors or things that can also affect the immune system. Hand washing is one of the best ways that you can protect yourself and others from getting sick. Germs can spread from people or surfaces when you touch your eyes, nose and mouth with unwashed hands, prepare or eat foods and drinks with unwashed hands, touch a contaminated surface or object, or blow your nose, cough, or sneeze into hands and then touch another person's hand or a common object such as a doorknob. Make it a routine to wash your hands often with soap and water. Before, during, and after preparing food. Before eating food. Before and after caring for someone at home who is sick with vomiting or diarrhea. Before and after treating a cut or a wound after using the toilet or helping someone else use the toilet, after blowing your nose, coughing, or sneezing, after handling pet food, treats, or waste, and after touching the garbage. Use hand sanitizer with 60% alcohol if you are not able to wash your hands. Now it's time to revisit another one of our questions. True or false? Antibacterial soap is better than regular soap for washing your hands. The answer is false. Any regular soap actually will do the trick. Also, it doesn't really matter if the water is warm or hot. As long as you can get the soap to lather up or bubble, it would help make sure to keep your hands clean and germ-free. It is also important to know how long you wash your hands. A good hand washing time would be 20 seconds or singing the happy birthday song two times. The immune system changes throughout our lives. And as we get older, the immune system does not work like it used to. Over time, these changes can contribute to a greater chance of older people getting more infections and even possibly cancer. When we age, the immune system becomes less able to tell the difference between the body's healthy cells and other germs. As a result, autoimmune disorders can become more common. Autoimmune disorders are those conditions where the immune system attacks the body's healthy cells and tissues by mistake. An example of an autoimmune disorder includes rheumatoid arthritis, or RA, that attacks the joints and causes swelling and pain. There are special immune system cells called macrophages. 
that work more slowly as we age. These macrophages work to destroy bacteria, cancer, and other antigens from the germs. This slowdown is thought to be the reason why cancer is more common among older people, but scientists still have more to learn. The immune system T cells that work to remember germs respond slower to protect the body as we age. And there are also fewer white blood cells, so the body is less able to remember a germ and protect the body. Older persons have smaller amounts of those special proteins that help destroy bacteria. And the body still produces the same amount of antibodies or those soldiers that fight infections, but they become less able to do their job. We cannot control aging since it is a natural part of growing wiser, but for these reasons, it is important for older adults to get vaccines and booster shots. Vaccines or shots help prepare the body for an immune response. Vaccines are made with small amounts of weak or dead germs, so they do not cause your body any harm. Vaccines help the body carry immunity cells such as antibodies because it recognizes that these weak or dead germs from the vaccines do not belong, and so it tricks the body into building protection by tricking the body into thinking that it has an infection. As a result, the body then creates these immunity cells that remember how to fight the disease in the future. Vaccination is one of the safest ways to protect yourself against diseases that can be prevented. Vaccines or shots can wear off over time, and so it is recommended that adults keep their vaccines up to date. Immunity from childhood vaccines can wear off over time, therefore booster shots may be needed. The need for some vaccines depend on your age, as there are different vaccines recommended for different ages. It depends on your health conditions. If your immune system is weakened by another illness such as HIV or a medication or even other conditions such as cancer, heart disease, or chronic kidney disease, because some conditions can put you at a higher risk of infections. For people who have diabetes or asthma, it is highly recommended that they get the flu shot every year. And it also depends on lifestyle, such as your job or your travel habits. It is recommended that all adults need the flu shot every year the TD or tetanus and diphtheria, or the Tdap shot. Talk to your doctor about which vaccines are right for you. Time for another question. True or false, vaccines or shots are for small children only. That is false. We just learned that over time, the protection of vaccines that we get as children can wear off as we get older. It was once said that vaccines provide immunity or protection for a lifetime, but that is not always true. Always check with your doctor if you have any questions about the shots or vaccines that are right for you. And because adults may need booster shots, and because it is recommended for adults to get some vaccines like the flu, pneumonia, and to protect against the shingles, this statement is false. Smoking. Cigarette smoke has over 7,000 chemicals that can interfere with the immune system and the body's ability to fight illness. Smoking is linked to longer lasting and more severe illness. Diseases that can also be worsened by smoking include infections in the lungs like pneumonia and the flu, gum disease, Crohn disease which affects the digestive system, and cancer. Smoking increases the risk for immune and autoimmune disorders, and new evidence finds that smoking is a cause of rheumatoid arthritis. Smokers tend to also have lower amounts of vitamin A and D. It's unclear why the exact cost of lower levels of vitamins in people who smoke, but studies do suggest that it may be the result of a poor diet or possibly other effects of the cigarette smoke. As we learned under the nutrition section, these two vitamins are powerful antioxidants that help restore the body, and while it may be tempting to increase supplements, the best option is to stop smoking. Exercise can contribute to good health and can support the, a healthy immune system. However, the relationship with how exercise specifically improves the immune system ability to protect us is not exactly known. Evidence suggests that exercise that is done early in life can play a role in the later years of life, but it is never too late to experience the benefits of exercise. But the sooner exercise is done, 
the more it can help support a healthy immune system later in life. Scientists have come up with some beliefs on how exercise can boost immunity. Exercise may help flush bacteria out of the lungs and out of the airways that we breathe. Exercise may cause antibodies or other immune cells to circulate faster so that they can detect those illnesses earlier. It is also believed that the rise in the body temperature during and after exercise may prevent bacteria from growing or help the body fight infection better. It is also thought that exercise slows down the release of stress hormones. Lower stress hormones may protect against illnesses. There are other benefits of exercise. It helps lower stress, weight, cholesterol, blood sugar levels, blood pressure, the risk of diabetes, as well as heart disease. Exercise helps improve heart strength, bone strength, blood flow, muscle tone, joint flexibility, energy levels, and sleep quality. Earlier we talked about stress and quality of sleep as two things that can affect the immune system. Although we don't understand the specific relationship between exercise and how it improves immunity, chances are that exercise can be helpful by improving the immune system indirectly. We learned that stress can cause cortisol levels to increase and that cortisol levels affect the production of antibodies or those soldiers that protect the body. If exercise helps lower stress, it can help manage those cortisol levels that will not interfere with those antibodies. And the same goes with sleep. Talk to your healthcare provider before starting any exercise program and choose an activity that you'll enjoy. Consider mixing the following types of exercises, such as aerobic activities to make your heart beat faster, stretch activities, and strength activities to work your muscles two or more times a week. Be active for at least 30 minutes, five days a week, you can break down your sessions by having, for example, one 30-minute session, two 15-minute sessions, or even three 10-minute sessions. The important thing is to get your body moving your way. Make sure that you warm up and listen to your body. And remember that exercise is medicine. Schedule a time to take your medicine. If you had to take medicine, you'd probably make sure that you wouldn't forget to take it. So it might be helpful for you to think about exercise as medicine to help build it into your daily habits. In summary, there's no single thing that a person can do to improve the way their immune system works. A healthy immune system takes more than just good nutrition or supplements. It is the combination of many things. However, if you have a chronic or ongoing health condition, you can still benefit from making changes that will support a healthy lifestyle and immune system. Challenge yourself. Set a goal to improve in any one of these areas. Eat well, get good sleep, manage stress, wash your hands, exercise, do not smoke, and get your vaccines or shots. Thank you so much for joining me. We look forward to seeing you virtually again next week and at one of our resource centers as soon as we can. Until then, stay active, healthy, and informed.